What's up everyone? I'm Milian. This is Milian Malivok Music and this is my new home studio. So this is it, a fresh start in a new place. A lot has happened in the past weeks and months. I finished my master's degree, which kind of burns me out, um, but have been recovering and I'm feeling so much better now. I'm not a student anymore. I found a job, which I'm going to start soon. And uh, yeah, and I moved to a new place. I know I said I wanted to go ahead and do YouTube full time. But I had the chance to take this part-time job, which actually has something to do with social media. Um, more on that, maybe another time. Again, it's a part-time job, so around 20 hours a week. And I have the other 20 hours to hopefully work on videos. And uh, I'm really excited for this. And I figured because I'm renting and paying my own bills, um, I want to have a minimum amount of money coming in each month. Um, if I'm going to start, you know, YouTube now full time, uh, it's a bit hard to <laughs> to pay the bills, and I would have to live off um, some savings, which I don't want to do. So I think this is a great compromise to get this thing going again. Now you're probably wondering if you know the channel, what's with the channel name? What happened? Now, a little story to uh, make yourself comfortable. A little story to the Solhange name. In the beginning, this channel wasn't made for gear reviews and stuff. It was just a band channel where I would upload the music of my former band that we created in 2012, December 2012. So almost 10 years ago, we created this band that was why the channel existed and we play we were active until like 2016 in that time i made my first review video and it kind of transformed into this thing and i realized i'm onto something here so yeah this is how soulhenge became my youtube channel how soulhenge became me so i thought being in this new place here uh with a fresh start you know these last two years were kind of awkward and in terms of you know content output very very random i wanted to do a rebrand of the channel so hence the name and i want to make it more personal so well malivok is not my real surname but it's the surname of my great grandmother so that's kind of cool and with the addition of music i think it's now clearer what this channel is about it's about music so i just wanted to get this out of the way Hope you like it. Um, I do. Nothing really changes apart from that and the new location, but yeah. So this brings me to this place. And I would say it's now time to show you around in the new studio. So let's go. Let's start with the heart of the studio, the workplace. So the desk is a mixture of a ready-made studio desk and some DIY modifications so the desk itself used to be a glorious workbench so the base and this riser here this is a sheet of plywood that i bought myself and ran it off the corners here to match the riser and i stained it with this uh, brown stain it looks really really cool um, the problem with the glorious workbench was that it wasn't deep enough so i didn't have a lot of room to just put stuff, you know. What I've also done is I've lowered this riser here because I've been looking up at my computer screen, which was a bit annoying. So this is now perfect to put, you know, keyboard and the interface right down there. And uh, that's all I need. The computer is a 2021 24 inch iMac in Bondi Blue, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, silicon M1 chip, uh, and one terabyte of internal storage. 
works perfectly, it has a super, super crisp 5K display, and it's so nice to just um, do videos on here and uh, works very nice with Logic Pro and Final Cut. So I'm staying all Apple because it just works and it suits my workflow. As interface, I have a Motu M4, which I've actually got as a present from a very kind subscriber and supporter of my No Ostriches music, Hans Werner. Thank you so much. I don't know what to say, this is so kind and uh, yeah, I'm basically using this every time I'm here to listen to music, to record everything and uh, yeah, it's really cool. Hard drive storage at two terabytes. Monitors are still my Adams A3 axes, uh, which are super, super crisp and uh, they're paired with a Adam sub seven so seven inch subwoofer and I love the combination. It's just perfect for, you know, a smaller room. Other than that, I've got two MIDI keyboards here, Korg and Altoira. I don't know, just nothing special just to play in my virtual instruments. Yeah, so much for the desk. That's pretty much all I need to make music and videos. Moving to the left hand side of the studio, we have this very sturdy, nice shelf here, which is a simple IKEA shelf. Uh, I've stained the sheets myself uh, with the same stain that I've done my desk and it looks super super crisp. Yeah, on here we have just some decoration. This is a tape machine, a Juha, Juha I think, uh, made in Germany from the 70s I believe. Uh, it belonged to my grandfather as well as all the other stuff, some micro old microphones, the original Walkman. So cool. A Polaroid camera. Yeah, this is just, I don't know, for show. Moving one floor down, there's the amp section. There's my Jet City JCA 20H. Uh, definitely not playing this enough. It's super nice amp, got it for so cheap. Next to that, there's the Alpha Omega 500 uh, by Dark Laws Electronics. I've got this amp uh, last year when I was rehearsing and playing gigs with Legacy of Atlas as their bassist. Right now it's not being used, but I'm keeping it just in case, you know, I ever play bass again in the band. You never know. For recording, I use the Dark Glass Ultra plugin. So that's definitely more convenient. Moving another floor below that, uh, there's my Behringer DeepMind 6, which I've got in the beginning of this year. Uh, very awesome synth. I've got this for a very, very good uh, price on the used market. I think like 300 and 80 euros or so. I think they're like 550 new. Very nice analog synth, digitally controlled analog synth. So the sound, the oscillators are analog, but it's digitally controlled. So you have presets and you have built-in effects, which is very nice to have it in the unit. Next to that are a couple of very, very colorful pickups, which are for a project that is coming, a very, very big project, which I promise you is worth the wait. These were made by legendary pickups, hand wound by Jason in Scotland. Very, very nice chap. And uh, I am actually in the legendary pickups artist family. Uh, yeah, very proud to say that. Um, as you know, my Ibanez RG450 Genesis has uh, legendary pickups, the Siren set. So happy with that guitar and uh, definitely more legendary pickup stuff coming um, in the future. I'm sure about that. Yeah, so much for this corner. Um, down below, there's just some boxes with random stuff, you know, guitar strings, uh, straps and whatever I need. So <coughs> continuing down on the left hand side of the studio is my real amp setup, my analog amp setup, which I'm not using that much to be honest because I'm always recording and practicing through plugins. Um, but it's here, it can be used, it is hooked up and ready to go. So um, my main amp is the PRS MT15, which I've had for, I don't know, two years. Such a great amp for metal tones and for like sparkly clean tones. It's not that good for crunch stuff and that in between, but for metal it is just so good. Uh, next to that is the Torpedo Captor 8 load box by two notes. 
Um, I'm using this for when I record the amp directly and it's always hooked up um, between the amp and the cap to attenuate the signal by minus 20 dB. This helps so much because I can crank the master volume and just get a richer tone without actually just blowing my ears off when playing here at home. It's all connected to this absolutely overkill sized cab. Uh, which I've built myself in 2017. It's made of 18 millimeter plywood. It is unbelievably heavy, um, but because of the heaviness, um, it sounds very, very tight and very crisp, and I love the sound of it. Um, I got it a very old angle cab for the speakers. I believe they are vintage 30s, I think so. Um, but anyway, it sounds really good, pretty happy with that cab. I don't know why I built a 4x12 to play here at home, but uh, yeah, here it is. And down here, just a couple of pedals that I'm using, Hog uh, Octava Silencer, which is a noise gate by Sunless FX, very good one knob noise gate. The Winter Overdrive by Sunless FX as well, really love that overdrive. Nox Compressor, Moa Ensemble King, which is chorus, a very cheap reverb by TC Electronic and a ditto looper. Again, I'm not playing a lot with this analog setup. Uh, I prefer plugins for the right reasons. <sighs> Even further down the left hand side of the studio is the guitar rack, which is always too small. You know, we all know the problem. Ibanez RG3570Z Prestige. Going to change the trem block on this very soon. Uh, so that's going to be on the channel. Ibanez RG350 from I think 1988 needs a refret and I'm going to do stainless steel frets so that's coming uh, absolutely love this guitar next is a black machine copy which was built by just a hobby luthier just like me and I got this for 200 euros it needs a fret leveling but other than that it's a pretty amazing guitar for the price and considering it's hand built Harley Benton Amarok six string baritone Love this guitar to just, you know, play stupidly low notes when I need to. It's a great way to release frustration. Can recommend that. Ibanez RB800 uh, from 1987, I believe. Sounds awesome for modern stuff. Uh, it's a four string long scale. Yeah, and it looks super 80s, which I approve. Last but not least, Ibanez Sound Gear five string. Uh, I think it's the SR. Uh, 1305 I believe so and this is from 1993 uh, yeah so older than me and this corner there's just some you know random stuff guitar cases tripods yeah let's go to the other side so on the right hand side of the studio there's this very cool integrated bookshelf which I used to store all of my pedals very cool to have them at this play like this. Kramer Beretta special hiding in the corner. I have everything ready to modify this guitar, so that's coming. Behringer Poly D, absolutely in love with the synthesizer. Fully analog, except for the sequencer and some gimmicks. Fully analog for the rest, analog oscillators. The sound is what you dial in, and it stays like that. No presets, absolutely love it to fool around on it and just create atmospheres and weird noises, and uh, yeah. We'll never get rid of this. Last but not least, we got this lovely piece of used furniture, which perfectly matches the, you know, the darker woods color theme uh, of the room. Uh, here on top are a tuner, radio tuner, and a cassette deck from a whole hi-fi system that also belonged to my grandfather. This is just for decoration. I think it looks just awesome and, you know, knobs and stuff. And this is an old clock, which is my room clock here to see what time it is. Uh, very 80s as well with the digital display. So in this drawer, I finally got space for all my gear in one spot. So as you can see, finally got my camera gear in one place. Microphones, cables, headphones, everything I need. Check this out, by the way. I don't know if it shows, but wait, look at it, it's lit. Yeah, anyway. Ah, come on. So much for what is 
in the room, maybe to wrap this up, let's talk quickly about the room itself. Now, it is much bigger than my other place and it sounds quite different, I had to learn when I moved in here. Uh, the problem that I had at first was it was really, really boomy in here and uh, I didn't know what to do exactly. And well, the thing is, I didn't want to, you know, do permanent modifications to this room. It's still a rental place and I want to keep it, you know, as removable as possible. So I tried my best to use some absorbers on the walls. These black things that you see everywhere. Uh, these white ones there, the very fancy ones, are from Vicoustics. Just fancy absorbers. Way too overpriced, <laughs> but they look cool. But even with all of that, I noticed there was so much low end, well, mid, lower mid boom in here, like building up. And uh, it's still, if you can, if you listen, it's still not ideal in here. And just the fact that when a car passes by in the rain, the glass is so thin, it's, it's single panel glass in here. And uh, it, it's, there's no way I could make this into like a full-on professional studio. So what helped with the booiness was this cloud from T Acoustics, which I got as a B-stock. It helps to absorb the primary frequencies, you know, coming from the speakers from the desk up. And so it doesn't also bounce between the ceiling and the desk. Um, it could need a second cloud over here where I'm standing because it's still, I don't know, you probably can hear it over the microphone as well. When I'm speaking, it's kind of like and uh, I, it's really a problem with bass buildup in here. Um, the room is four meters deep, I think 350 wide and 250 high. My last place, I could touch the ceiling like with my hand like this um, and it was cramped with stuff. So I think that helped to make it, you know, crisp and dense. This is much more open and you can hear that. And I think also the problem is this, you know, this diagonal wall uh, and this one, it's not really solid. If, if, you, if you listen in here, this is solid stone. You know, it's really firm, but listen to that. Also the ceiling. They're pretty thin and I sometimes feel like, you know, at, at some volumes, the room is just, you know, the whole room is resonating. I wasn't ready to spend hundreds, thousands of euros to make a full-on professional studio out of this not ideal room. And I still don't know if I'm going to spend one year or t 10 years in this place. I don't know. So I wanted to keep it, you know, just easy. Uh, I can get my work done in here and it's super comfortable. It looks great. And I think that's all that matters to me right now. So yeah, this is the new place and I'm really looking forward to create more videos in here for you and uh, generally make music in here. So yeah, that's that. Welcome on the channel and uh, it's great to be back. And the alarm is off. That's all for today. Um, yeah, take care. Stay healthy and I will see you very soon.